Hello and welcome to another show. It should be a cup of tea with you and Gonzo, but I think it's more like a cup of tea with you and a cup of water with you, Gonzo. Yes, it's rather, rather hot. We're slightly delayed. I was just said to gee, I've got this fingerprint recognition thing on this laptop, and I'm so hot it wouldn't recognise my fingerprint, either that or I'm an imposter. Yeah, to be fair, my tea's almost finished waiting for you. Uh, is, it, um, is, it, is it snowing in Scotland? We've got a heat wave down here. It, 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 the sun came out briefly. We all, we all have to stop, though. Um, we're not used to it. But I, I had some deliveries this week, Gonzo. Do you want to see some of my deliveries? The post has been quite kind. Has he come? Uh, the other end, summer's deliveries come, is it? <laughs> uh, well, not quite. But unless you're a West Ham fan, it might be something just as good. Um, I've got a signed photo of Alan Creswell. I've got a signed photo of Tony Cotty. I've got another one of Alan Creswell. And uh, I'm going to give these away on the, the channel soon. So if you're new to the channel, drop a subscription. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And subscribe to the other channel. The link will be at the end. But we'll be giving this away soon. Oh, I also got this. I also got this. I've got a new waist shirt. Yeah, that's, that's, the nice, that's nice. I like that one. I like the black and the blue. Yeah, we'll be doing a video on both shirts, and um, we'll be out soon in a couple of days. Um, so make sure you, you check that out. But we also want your photos of if you've got a away shirt, take a photo of it and tweet us at hammers underscore chat because we're going to include it in the video. So uh, make sure that you can send us your videos. But Gonzo, it feels like I've only spoke to you a few days ago in here, but it's, a lot has happened in that time. It has. It has. Lots of um. Not so many signings coming in, but a few um, departures, some permanent and some temporary. What one do I talk about first? Uh, I guess Reese Oxford is, would seem to be the uh, the one, because all the videos come out today, of him at Much and Gladbeck. It's uh, not a surprising loan. The rumour's been about for a couple of weeks now. Uh, what, what did you make of this? Are you happy that he's gone there, or are you thinking it's a bit of a waste? No, I, I, well, uh, the proof of the pudding will be in the tasting, of course. That's if he plays games. If he does play games, then I think it's a, a bit of a mastermind move, quite frankly. Um, I think, actually, not just footballers. I was just about to say, I think any footballers that go and um, and spend a period, you know, travelling and, and working overseas, it, it sort of... Um, it's it's very very good uh, to expand yourself in that way, but not just footballers. Anyone to to expand your horizons is a good thing. I think he'll mature a lot. I think he'll be away from his mates and his family and um, learning a new language, learn a new culture, and that's before we've even spoken about what he'll learn tactically from a football, a new coach. I, I can see only positives from it. Actually, too few English footballers go and have a go abroad. I think it's a brilliant deal. Um, I think this hopefully this also means that. Burke's going to be involved more if they're sort of getting rid of one of the youngsters. It surely means that, well, Rice will be the other 23 captain and Burke will be in the first team. Hopefully, that's what I'm hoping. That's what I was hoping for. I think this is a fantastic low move, actually, for everyone. For Reese, for the reasons you mentioned. For West Ham, again, for the reasons you mentioned, they're going to send a kid away and hopefully get a man back. Hopefully, that's what's going to happen. It's a, it's a good deal for, for, for them as well. They're getting a, a young kid with loads of potential. They had Christensen, who's been on loan there for two years now from Chelsea, playing at centre back. He's 21 now. Chelsea have basically said they're not giving them on loan anymore because John Terry's moved, well, left. So he's back. He won Player of the Year in his first year there. He must, he, so he would have been 19 years old and he won their Player of the Year playing at centre back and stuff. So I think they were obviously thought, well, who's the next young centre back from England that we can get in on loan cheap that's going to fill this guy's role? And I think they've picked Reese Oxford. Um, I mean, they are trying to buy him, but Chelsea seem reluctant to let him go. They had a £14 million bid last summer rejected, so Chelsea obviously rate him very highly. And I think he's the future at Chelsea. But um, the good news, you might not have seen this, Jack Sullivan has said that the deal is appearance-related. Um, so it's basically... They will pay so much, but if, the more games he plays, the cheaper they get the loan deal. So do you think, do you think that's a... Even better deal for West Ham now. Yeah, and lesson learned. You know, you live and you learn, don't you? Really, I'm sh quite sure that there's. They didn't expect that to happen at Reading. I've said that. I doubt 
even Reading's owners or whoever did it probably expected them to challenge into the playoffs or as, as high as they did. So it's almost like the further Reading went in the championship, the more they sort of had to play their most experienced team. I think had they been around mid-table, not really threatening the playoff spots, Oxford probably would have played more. But there's no way that the club would have anticipated that he would have played as few games as he did. So I think you learn from your lessons. And I think that's a wise move for them to do that. And I'd be absolutely gobsmacked. And you've just sort of proved that that's the case. I'd be absolutely gobsmacked if conversations didn't take place where they said, look, we loaned him to Reading last season. It didn't work out. Can this, can you guarantee him games? So, yeah, yeah. good. I think Reese is probably also needing guaranteed games as well because he's getting to a stage now where the England youth team are starting to look good, get quite successful. Certainly in the 20s winning um, this summer as well. So he needs to keep his place in the international squad. And when you're away, when you're abroad, I think sometimes you have to work twice as hard to stay in the England squad. I think that's one of the sort of negatives because nobody's going to fly out to Germany to watch him. Um, so he's got to stay in there by grabbing the headlines. And it'll be interesting to see if, if it works. But uh, someone else went to Germany, um, Nordweit. Are you happy he's gone? Yeah, I think that's good business. He wasn't going to... He couldn't get into our first team and he wasn't going to get into our first team next season. If he couldn't get into our first team last season, won't happen this time. He was free. He was a free transfer. We pocketed three, four, five million, depending on what website you read. So I have to think that that's, that's good business. And as he is a defensive player, bear it, you, we all got our ideas, whether he's a defensive, central defensive midfielder a right back or a centre back, but they are defensive positions and we, we have other players that can play those and certainly young players coming through who might like to fill those positions. So I think it's a good move all round and a good move for him. Got no animosity towards him, no, but yeah, good move. I think if it's four million, um I know someone reliable that says four million for West Ham is eight million at their end, but because he's on lower wages the other four million he's got to pay for the, the drop in wages he's taken to move. But would you not say he's our best defensive midfielder? You're saying we've got a better options in all the positions he can play, but I don't know if we've got a better option in defensive midfielder. I don't think we've got another one. I don't think he's the best at anything, Gio, quite frankly. I've seen him get run ragged at defensive midfield a few times, uh, you know, a couple of times last season. Um, no, I don't think he, I think it'd be hard to say he excelled at anything. He had one really good game, forget it, who, who it was against. Um, it was a home game. Uh, can't remember who. Uh, towards the end of the season, and that's it. There, there was no, there's no excellence from him, and I think we need to look to to bring in better players than Havard Nordvite if we're going to improve on last season's finishing position. Certainly. Do you think he had a raw deal? Yeah, a bit, a bit. He wasn't given a fair chance. I would say he, he'll he'll look back and think, oh, if if I could have got a little run of games, I could have shown more, and he might have a point. Uh, I'm not saying that, but the fact of the matter was he wasn't given those games to prove himself. So consequently, he didn't prove himself. And because of that, there's certainly no room for him to then go and prove himself next season. If, if, if what you say is four million, four million pound profit. Good. But let's put that towards something and, and get somebody now, you know. Yeah, I I, I, th I feel a bit for him. I think he's shown enough in his natural position. However, saying that, I remember when I was speaking to Tom and Mike on let's discuss our summer series about the Norway. And I said, well, the worst defensive, the worst midfield partnership I've seen this season was when he played with Fernandez against Liverpool. We didn't have any centre midfield at all. And that's, I know and people said, well, everyone played bad that game. Well, yeah, but that was his chance. That's where he stamps his authority down. So this is my position. I'm not having this, but he just, you know, there, that goal that's, the, the third one, when they ran up the field, he just stood there watching someone run in front of him to score. And you think, well, He's put in effort, and that's the type of thing you don't want to see. Um, but we've got too much options in him because I still think he's our only natural defensive midfielder. But that's where we get out of that situation by just not playing a defensive midfielder with two centre midfielders. I, I agree. I also think if you play a three-five-two, then possibly you don't even need one. If you've got three centre backs and you're, and you're asking your wing backs to to take up defensive positions a lot of the times, well, that's five defenders. The other guys are good enough. They might not be. Um, sort of bona fide defensive midfielders, but certainly OBN, Kiate, Noble, they're good enough at shielding five guys behind them, certainly. So, uh, yeah, I don't think we, it's needed. The best, the best thing about this deal, I know you say about the profit, the best thing for me is it means hopefully we're going to see more of Fernandez and Cullen 
I think this has got to mean, while Oxford means Burke will be here, this to me has to mean that Cullen plays. It's got to be Cullen's chance now. Um, do, do, do you think that this has to be why he's leaving? This has to be a result of him leaving, if you like that. We don't need a replacement. We just use what we've got more. Well, you have to give young players encouragement, and, and the only way to do that is by giving them, you can say what you want, but you need to give them a route into the first team. So you show them. So you say, this is your chance. This is your squad position. This is who, whose place you're going to be taking. And that's what you do. But Nordweiss' position wasn't as the first choice central defensive midfielder or central midfielder. Okay. Here is the key. What you do is when you do suffer those injuries to Obiang or Noble or whoever, you don't then try and shoehorn somebody else in. And I'm not levelling this particularly at West Ham. This is something that a lot of clubs do when they've got their youngsters there. So, for instance, let's say Kiate, Noble and um, Obiang got injured next season and we had Fernandez there in the middle. You know, I don't want Bilic to grab Zabaleta and play him in central midfield. It is, do you know what I mean? If the older midfielders are decimated, then you, then what you're saying to the young player is, there you go, there's your chance. Uh, it was, it was like last season. Last season, we were without any strikers at all at some points, and you just thought, if Fernand, um, if Martinez had been there, that was that would have been their chance to play and play him now. And you think, well, actually, if he's not going to play now, he's probably not going to play at all. Bad example, but you know what I mean. So if you're going to have him in the squad, when there are injuries. Give him a game. Let him play. Yeah, it's got to be. It's, this has to be Josh Collins' time now for me. Don't replace Norby. We've got profit. Put it towards a striker, please. Just do not get. We don't need a centre midfielder. We don't need a centre back. Despite the fact we've let two go. Don't replace any of them. Use Burke and Cullen, please. That's all. That's what I hope for anyway. Um, but before we talk about the strikers or lack of strikers. We want your opinion on Nordby and Oxford and the strips, anything West Ham. Record yourself on your phone for 60 to 90 seconds and send it to the email address, which is below. It's gonzohammerschat at gmail.com. And we're putting all the clips together in videos and it's going up on our other channel. Um, we put it out on social media, etc. But definitely get your phone out right now. Record yourself. Give us your opinion on anything West Ham. Um, Gonzo, strikers or lack of strikers, what are you feeling right now? Starting to get a little bit edgy, if the truth be known. Um, feels like we're waiting for the other clubs to make their moves. And I think that's quite a quite a worry. I think if you look at the Man City situation, so they're clearly keeping Aguero. Perhaps he was a slightly out of favour at the start, but towards the end of the season, I think he proved himself to Guardiola. Um, Jesus looks like he is... The one so it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Uh, Jesus looks like man. Um, so there's two guys there that are going to play up front. They're probably going to bring someone else in, but because they've already got cover with two strikers there, I think you can just go and buy Ilanacho. I don't think you have to wait for them to to buy, bring someone else in. I think if you go in there and offer the 25 million, I think you get him, and I think that's really what we should be doing. Arsenal with a Giroud situation. It looks like Wenger wants to sign someone first. Well, as I said in the last cup of tea, Wenger takes a long time to do anything in the transfer market. So if you wait for that, we can end up with no striker at all. Um, and Batch Schweibel, today they're rumoured to be interested in Lewandowski. Yesterday it was somebody different. The day before it was somebody different again. If you're waiting to get that player, that might not happen. You've actually just got to go out and buy somebody now. Yeah, it's, it's get to the point now that I think we've got fingers touching pies but there's no fingers in the actual pie itself and then we're sort of just stroking the crust and glazing somewhat. glazing the crust with a bit of egg yeah we're sort of stroking the crust of the, the pie hoping that the the crust will crumble off or something i don't know what we're hoping for but there's just there's a lack there's a lack of urgency going on but i think the fans are starting to get nervous now because it's you know they're back for pre-season training in a couple of weeks, and that's when people will think, "Bloody hell!" You know we're seeing pictures now, and we've only got Zabaleta there. There's no one else, and um, but you know it's. I think we just wait. The big clubs are gonna, like I said in the last one, the big clubs are gonna have their say, and then we're gonna get what comes down from the big clubs. Um, but that um, Jesus, I don't know how accurate it was. I think he got knocked. I don't know how injured he is. He might not be injured at all, but it might be serious. I think he got. Whacked in the eye or something, uh, but 
favourite to get you, Nacho, now is Leicester. Um, would you take that as a massive slap in the face if he ended up at someone like Leicester City? Listen, you know me, I'm, I don't really care who we get, okay? I just want us to get our target. Whoever the scouts, who know more about football than I do, have decided they want to get, I just want them to go and get him. So, if what they've decided is that Ian Acho is their top priority and the striker that they want more than any other and they lose out to Leicester it's a serious problem it's a serious serious problem because it would have meant that we've dragged our heels over we don't know we don't know the ins and outs the rumor has it that they want a sell-on cause a buyback cause we discussed it before and if what happens is we get picked at the post by Leicester, because they're willing to do what we weren't willing to do, then it's a serious problem, particularly on the back of Benteke. It sort of goes a little bit under the radar, but we bid for Benteke. We were interested in Benteke. Benteke had talks with us last season, and regardless of what anyone knows, not everyone's favourite, but it was a Premier League striker in the 30 million bracket who scores Premier League goals, and we got beaten by Crystal Palace. Now, I know Leicester won the league, but you're looking at a similar size club to Crystal Palace. They don't have Europe next season, so they're back following their glory, their little couple of glory years, they're back down to sort of where they were, which is nothing to be ashamed of, of course. But if we get beaten by them to that striker, well, hold on, what was the point? It feels like we're sort of a bit of a cash cow at the moment, West Ham, because it's like, you know, like we said, we make a bit of money from Nordvite. The season tickets are doing really, really well. Um, it was not my words. I think my, I might even been Karen Brady's words. I'm not sure. The deal of the century was what our deal was described of at the London Stadium. Two and a half million pound a year. We haven't got all these big bills that all the other clubs have got. We must be awash with money. Now, it doesn't mean we've got 300 million, but I'm sure we must have 50, 60, 70 million. We really must have. So I don't really see the issue. We're spending 25 million pound on a player that would improve the team and that we probably want. Yeah, we haven't spent anything yet. That's the other thing. We've probably got Zabaleta. We still haven't spent anything, so we must have a decent bit of wedge sitting there. I don't know what we're waiting for. You know, at some point, clubs will have to accept getting their pants pulled down in order to get the deal they want. And I think this is a time where David Sullivan's just going to have to accept getting his pants pulled down. His arse smacked in front of the people, but he goes and gets the man he wants, Village wants, etc. Whatever it costs, it costs. Now, obviously, there's too much. You're not going to pay 50 million for Giroud. But if 28 million is going to go get him, then we need to, I think we need to stop hesitating, really. Just go get someone so we can all stop panicking. Even Noble started to come out with comments. We'll move on to them later. Um, but if Leicester did get you, Nacho, would you take any Leicester stickers? Here we go. Jimmy Vardy, the diving cheat who likes to bow in front of the West Ham fans, and Slimani. Would you take any of them? Well, I'd take Musa out of any of them. Uh, Slimani, we were linked with for a long, long time. I don't really think it's what we need. I think we need outright pace. And yes, Vardy's got outright pace, but uh, Vardy's pace is going to go at some point over the next season or two. Maybe he'd be one of those players who you say he's a signing for now. But unlike Giroud, who, as I say, his game is not based on pace. Vardy's is absolutely 100% based on pace. Giroud, you'll get three or four years out of him. You won't get out of Vardy. So I probably would go for Musa if that was the case, who I thought was quite underused. I think he's quite a useful player, uh, Ahmed Musa. So, yeah, possibly him. But I do feel that if, if we've got Musa or Slimani, I do feel that that would be not really what we signed up for. This this, this was not the, the thing. The, the, More sideways. Yeah, it's sideways, and the whole point of the, the stadium move was so as we could cart, we start competing, we could assign those players at Upton Park. So, in fact, we were linked with Slimani for three or four seasons. So, no, that wouldn't be... There would be no natural progression that you might feel that we had if we signed a Giroud or an Ian Atcher. Yeah, um, I'm not sure about Musa. I know what you're saying, but he's not really done well at Leicester. He's been sort of flop of the season for me, really. Um, Slimani, I think, looks brilliant. Vardy, if he didn't dive, I'd probably say, yeah, go for him. Uh, but the problem is he's a cheat. He is a diving cheat. And you say he's based on pace. It's also based on deceit. Yeah. And, is this, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take none of them, Gio. You just asked me for one from Leicester. I, I, been, I don't want to be shopping in that shop. Do you know what I mean? We, we, need, we, need, to go, we need to go Marks and Spencers or Waitrose or something. We don't need to go to Lidl's to get our strikers. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well... Um, Traore, we spoke about him in the last show, whether we wanted him or not. Um, it looks like he might be off to Chelsea uh, for apparently 20 million, roughly. We bid 8 million. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a funny one. I, I we spoke about him in the last cup of tea. I quite fancy him. I thought there's a player in there. It's really, it's really good. So yeah, but that, but no, <laughs> nobody seems to want him. And at the moment he's linked to game with Chelsea, people are saying, "Oh no, I can't believe we picked a player." Well, the most you've only got to look at out. You know, not everyone. I, I would imagine five to ten percent West Ham fans weren't him. Most people didn't. So it doesn't matter if he's gone to Chelsea, really, does it? But I do think there's a player in there, and there's no surprise because they were linked with him after when we played Middlesbrough and he. He tore us a new one. Um, everyone said, oh, he's good. Maybe we could do well getting him. And everybody was saying at the time, oh, I think he might be off to Chelsea. Chelsea are after him. So it wouldn't surprise me. And also, I mean, we all thought Victor Moses was absolutely useless. And then Conte got hold of him and turned him into um, a decent player. So it wouldn't surprise me if he got hold of him and, and, and got a tune out of him as well. Strange one, Chelsea. They've got so many players probably of a similar calibre on loan. I don't know why they buy him. they got it. They got, they got they got their own triori. What did they what have that one for? Yeah, they just sold um, that Salah as well to, to Man City. So it's but it's not it's a weird one now. I can't I don't know how true it is. It's just a rumor just now. But the funny thing there though is it's twenty million. We bid eight million. Is that sort of is that the underlying problem with our club right now? We're trying to look for a bargain rather than the the player. Same again. If that's who we've highlighted and that's who we want, we need to go and get him. I've no doubt. Uh, it's the game with Steve Gibson at Middlesbrough. He's saying 20 million. Chelsea probably aren't. Well, I can't see why Chelsea would want to buy him. They've got better players there and, and can spend what they want. Uh, however, he is a sort of player that we would be looking to buy. Um, so we've been at 8 million. Steve Gibson said, oh, well, Chelsea are playing 20. I'm pretty sure it's a game of brinksmanship and uh, we'll settle on about 12. Yeah, well, away from the, have you seen any more rumours or gossip around transfers? Or any other bits and pieces? Remind me, I might have done. I I can't think of any. That's all I've got for now. Um, what do you think? Well, old old um old what's it? I've forgotten his name now. The one in Belgium. What's his name? Oni 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 Okuru. Oni Okuru. Is that? It? It's that's gone quiet. It's just disappeared, doesn't it? It's gone off the. Th I assume we've decided that we're not going to get a work permit, so scrap it or something. I don't know. It's just gone completely dead. There's been nothing at all since. Apparently. Heard a few people he's having a medical not long ago, but now he's disappeared. Um, so we'll have to wait for that one. But it looks like it's gone dead. Um, well, news now, I suppose, facts and um, the home kit revealed today. Did, have you seen it? I did. They look really grumpy, didn't they? The three was it Candy Carol Oval <laughs> and Lansini, however. They were frowning and frowning. Right old moody one. I think they've been pulled back off their holidays early to, to be forced to wear the kit by the looks of it. They weren't they weren't happy at all. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's all right. I'm not fussed about kits, mate. I'm not that fussed. It's all right, it's they probably don't like the ongo cracking on the sleeve. That's yeah, that's the point of that there. But um I think it looks better than I thought when you saw that one on the hanger in Thailand. Oh I'm not sure about that, but now I've seen it on the body and stuff with the shorts and socks on looks all right actually and um, like i said the tracking is a lot better than you assume it to be um season ticket prices increase for new season ticket well this is a talking point um mm. for you that don't know the club obviously advertised season ticket renewals prices frozen the key word on that is renewals because they've now announced that if you're getting a season ticket and you're a new season ticket well you're going to pay more than those that renewed so the guy next to me in Gonzo, if he's a new season ticket owner, he will have paid 25 quid more. But it doesn't sound much. It's not much. But then the kids' tickets in Van 1 have gone from 99 quid up to 300 quid or something. Um, what do you think about that, Gonzo? It's a bit cheeky that they've been rolling out the, the frozen ticket prices. And granted, they did use the word renewal, but for me, it's more misleading. It's just... Well, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's misleading. I think it's very, very crystal clear. Actually, I think we've seen what's going to happen to the rest of us next season. So uh, you know, this time in twelve months' time, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I mean, I think we'll see all the. I think we're about to see in twelve months' time a season ticket rise across the board. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, again, again, you sort of wonder. The whole point of the move was for cheap tickets and for us to be able to facilitate and fund big players coming in well you know what if the tickets are going to go up and no players are going to come in then again you know it's it's it leaves a bit of a sour taste in the mouth hopefully it won't maybe it won't um i'd certainly if my my son's ticket goes from 99 pound to 300 pound he won't come 
it's as it's as simple as that we won't we will not be able to afford it and you know if, if let's say mine goes up 100 quid and then his goes up 200 quid we, we can't afford another 300 quid on top of that we'll have to you know because it'll start him that's the thing you're dealing with people and you're dealing with with families and it start then impacting the holiday or or, the, or my daughter's gymnastics club or whatever the case may be that that then you have to you know you have to say can i can this really be afforded do you, do you think they're trying to solve the 99 pound kit season ticket price do you think that's what they're trying to do if they're trying to do anything it will be to stop the naughtiness that goes on with a 99 pound ticket you know which is obviously that loophole that we know they, they possibly might be closing the loophole that sees somebody pie mm -hmm. and well, ticket alongside their own sorry mate you, you disappeared then so um they said they said this summer they're going to do an audit of everybody that's not an adult season ticket holder so they're just going to take proof of your birth and make sure you are an under 16 and i think that would solve it really i don't think there's any need to sort of um not punish people because People aren't being punished yet. The people that are renewing aren't punished. They've got the same price, etc. But the people that have been on the waiting list, they've seen these prices. Some of them might have joined because kids' tickets were 99 quid. Some people might have thought, well, that's a bargain. I'm going to join. I'm going to join my son as well. I'll pay 20 quid to get us both on the waiting list because we can afford this. Then it's 12 months later. It's like, oh, your £100 tickets just disappeared. And like you've just said, it's a case of, well, can we afford it? Because I think we can, like you said, we can all predict now that in May 2018, they're going to put the prices up to so everybody's paying the same rate. They're going to say, well, everyone's complaining that there's different prices, so we're going to put everyone's up. And Mark, um, who's on our boats, he's on our forum, um, he paid, he sits in band one with his two kids. So he's paying band one adult and two kids for 99 quid. Next year, if the prices go up to the new ticket, He's got to pay 400 quid more for his kids plus whatever his is. I think it's 55 quid more. So he's got to pay nearly 500 pounds more just for those three tickets, all because of where he sits. So there's still 99 pound ones over at band four and five. And this leads me to my next question. Do you think they're trying to create a family section without officially creating a family section, which is something they didn't do in the first place? They're forcing the kids into these bands. I don't know. I mean, it all sounds very conspiratorial and, and, and very, very complicated. I think it's a lot more simple than that. I just think they're trying to get the maximum revenue for the, you know, for the least amount of tickets. If you, if you know what I mean. If they're not going to get uh, that revenue through the sixty-six thousand that they hope to get, because it's not even been increased to sixty thousand. Never mind sixty-six, which needs the new health and safety license and, and all that other stuff. They might have even you know accounted for that additional income if they can't get it through opening up additional seats maybe they're just going to charge more for the seats that are currently there um yeah i i don't i don't i don't think there's an i don't think that i know what you're saying i don't think there's that level of creative thinking there that it's done to stop the abuse of 99 pound seats or to create a family section i i literally just think that they've had a season of the cheapest tickets in the premier league and now we're gonna start to mirror the other teams yeah i, th I think they're trying to amend their mistakes in the first place but you can't you can't offer a solution for a problem you created that's a false economy that's cheating in a way saying well i've come up with a solution yeah but you create the problem so don't you know pretend you've created you've come up with a solution i think the horse the horse is bolted the stable door is still flapping open really and i think they're trying to wonder how to get the horse back and this is their way of doing it uh, but, uh, listen i mean it's, it's not gonna be else i mean the west Ham fans have been very very loyal i i, I think there's not a single person who wouldn't have been surprised by the uptake on the renewals and it looks like we're gonna have a similar amount of people in the stadium that we had last season and whilst people were moaning that there was empty seats you've got to look where we've come from and that was 30 odd thousand to fill in that huge venue that, that we've got more almost filling it people people thought it would be half empty Let, let's not forget you remember when we were filming that first video down there that geezer that walked past us and started the arsenal fans started giving it all of that off camera to us um and he was saying it was going to be empty bit ruder than that wouldn't he but um and that's what people genuinely thought and the west Ham fans have done terrifically well to do that and i actually think we'll continue to be loyal but i do think in exchange for them putting the ticket prices up they do need to give us a team to be proud of on the pitch what i would say is mitigation i've been quite harsh on on the club now we've criticized them before for opening their mouths and saying this is who we're going to get in transfer and so i'll just just shut up and get the deal done maybe they are just shutting up and they're getting a deal done and they'll then just announce it no in the nose no nothing nobody giving a little sneaky little hint 
someone just gets paraded or done in the way that Man City did that Bernard Silver business or whatever his name was. Yeah, well, to be fair, I think Norway and Oxford were similar to that. That was rumours, but no one knew it was happening there and then. And I think that, while well, it was expected, uh, it was expected, those moves were expected. I think it was a surprise that they happened there and then. It's a case of, bah, Norway's left. Everyone thought, oh, hang on a minute. You know, he's gone, gone. But I think I think they're, I don't know, this, I think it's just another PR on goal this season to get price thing. And some people are saying, you have to expect an increase. It's not so much the increase that's annoying me. It's just the fact that they've sort of... I, I feel like they've misled us again with this whole uh, affordable football stuff. Someone tweeted us in a Hamish chat saying he's in the same band as he was up to part. He's now paying more next season if he was to... Like, the ticket for next for the new ones and it's the same band up to part. is now dearer than the last season at the bowl in. And this, where's the affordable football gone? You know, that was what was... That was one of the PR... Well, it was, it was affordable football in a world class stadium watching a world class team. So let's let's be let's be clear on that. We there's a lot of work to be done on, on all three counts, really. I think it's still affordable. I think it is still affordable, but it's just a bit Yeah, no, it is now. It's it's beautiful. I mean it, it is totally affordable now. And I probably would have if there'd have been another seat free, you know, in an well, I had to be actually next I would have got another child's ticket. That, that's absolutely you know, it is affordable now, but I'm talking about it starts creeping up season upon season upon season, incrementally getting closer to what the what the other teams playing. Because we are not Arsenal, we are not we are West Ham, and we're trying to build ourselves up to be that. But we don't have an Alexis Sanchez or a you know whatever pick your player from from yeah. whatever from whatever team that's going to fill the stadium. You know, yeah, supply and demand. I suppose ninety percent of the new away they've only got five thousand tickets to sell. They've got. 15,000 people wanting a season to I suppose they can afford to put 20 quid on here and there and still sell a 5,000. Um, let's move away from this. You guys, again, if you want to have your say on the season tickets or the gossip or the strips, get a camera out, film yourself for 60 90 seconds, send it into the email addresses below. All right, let's talk about a couple of players and what they've been saying over the last couple of days. Um, we, we like to start with, well, we'll start with Noble first because that was transfer related. Have you seen what Noble said, his interview? No. He, he basically said that the chairman's working hard, but we need to get a couple of players in and we're struggling. We can't, we're struggling with the money. We've got big money and we're struggling. Um, and then he basically said about how Zabaleta is looking forward to joining. So is it, is it worrying that our captain sort of putting out sound bites that the... Well, he's been asked to say that. That's the first I've heard of that. He wouldn't. He wouldn't know. Why would? Why would our captain know that what transfer negotiations are going? And, and we're we're struggling to get hold of a player that we're after. Listen, listen. He's more than able to say that Zebra is settling in well. You know, because he, he would know that sort of thing. But that sounds like he's been asked to say that. You know, almost prepping us. It's, it's obvious that the big teams have the big money. But I hope we're not struggling. You know, no. It's, that's that's that doesn't sound great. I don't want him to say. I don't want him to say that. I don't want him to know that. I don't want him want to be briefed. I want him to be running around and, and training or finishing off his holidays. He shouldn't know that stuff. Yeah, he, he did defend David Sullivan. Just said, you know, it's hard to get players in these days. You need a couple more, but it's difficult because of the prices. The transfer market's a bit mad, but he knows his, um, the chairman will be working really hard to get someone in and stuff. But it's, it's just a bit strange that the captain sort of coming out and saying that but I suppose what's he going to say if someone puts him on the spot what do you think mm. about your transfer target he's got to say something and I suppose what he said there is sitting on the bench really well the chairman's working hard and it's difficult to get players in and then um, but the other player this one caused more of a ruffle Cechu um, Kiate you've seen that one haven't you Those well, well, well I, I don't know what has actually been said I've, I've seen people panicking that he, he might be leaving or, or something so go on so tell, tell where did the rumour come from I don't have the quotes written down, so this isn't direct quotes, but he basically said he was playing at right back. He got told he was going to play at right back for one game. He ended up playing for three games. He wasn't very happy. He wasn't playing well, so he told Bullish to move him, and he did. But then he basically said that he's going to be starting pre-season with West Ham, but he doesn't know what's going to happen in the future, and you'll have to wait and see or something, something along those lines. But it was very... So was that his uh, agent that said that, or he said that? Do we know? He said that. To who? I mean, without I know you're not going to know what exactly, but I, I just I know nothing. I think I think this is where it gets a bit dodgy, and it says I think it was an African sexy um over there just now. But okay. 
the quotes were direct quotes. They weren't, uh, you know, like a, a made a one. Allegedly, check who Kiati said this. It was a case of Kiati who said this, open quotation, da da da, close quotation. It is pretty illegal to quote someone when they don't actually say something. Um, but would you be worried by those comments? I'd be very worried. I'd be very worried. Because, you know, for those that saw the video, I was lucky enough to go down the training ground last season and I, and I met with a lot of the players and, um, I mean, you know, we were walking through the, the, the players' canteen and the, the gym and all that. You know, we were we were there and there were the players. And, and I can tell you now, regardless of what anyone thinks about Cheku Kiate as a player, of what position he plays in, that guy is the heartbeat of the dressing room. Um, he is a funny guy. Everyone says he's a funny guy. He's mucking around. He's singing. He's dancing. He's, walk, he's walking through the canteen you know, tickling people and going around the other side and knocking their hats off and just, you know, laughing. He's the life and he is the absolute life and soul of that place. And, um, you know, maybe not the leader, but if there's anybody that keeps that dressing room harmonious and fun, he's a he's a vital, vital part. If anyone thinks team spirit has any part to play in football, then he would be a massive loss for us to lose him. And that's before I even mentioned his ability to, to kick a ball. Well, you said that about James Tompkins, though, and he's... Managed fighting since he left. He was also a big part of the Hamanadi at West Ham. And um, what about him kicking a ball in? Would you be worried if he left? Yeah, I would because I think he's a really good player. I also think he probably has some. I think he's. I think he's. He's got some reason to feel slightly aggrieved. I, I think it's a team sport. I think you have to do what you've got to do. If the manager asks you to play in this position or that or that position, you have to go and do it. And he also wasn't the only person that was asked to play right back last season. Let's be quite clear on that. However, I do feel that um, we see the best of him when when he plays centrally sometimes at center back but you know he's, he can be pretty damn outstanding when he plays in central midfield sometimes as well so if he's got a preferred position then um then i'd like i'd like to see him i'd like to see him in it but i'd also well, obiang was our standout midfielder last season up until the point where he got injured so that's something else for people to debate who starts alongside him but i do think it's we can't he is a guy that is a first-team player. I said earlier on Nordvite wasn't a first-team player. Cheku Kieto is a first-team player, and we don't need to lose any first-team players. So, yeah, that would be a worry from a ball-playing perspective as well. Yeah, as you know, I'm not his biggest fan. In I think he's a fantastic centre-back. I've got no idea why he doesn't want to be a centre-back, because I think he could be one of the best in Premier League. But as a centre-mid, I'm not his biggest fan. He just can't pass for my liking. But, you know, I don't really like his comments. You know, he said about how he got... Last play right back, and after three games, he wasn't happy. It's three games, you know, it's like it's a team thing. Why not get on with it? Get your shirt on. If I was bullish, I would have benched the bucket and put someone else on right back and left him on the bench. Go, well, you don't want to play right back, you can sit on the bench then. You don't know, pick where you play, you can put where you obviously everyone has a preferred position, but you can't just throw your toys out of the trap. You've got to play three games out of position while the squad's a bit light in a certain area. Um, but he would be a big loss. He's a good player, but I don't think he's irreplaceable. Um, he's not my first name on the team, sheet, that's for sure. But the problem is, and it's the bigger picture, would we replace him adequately? That's mm. that's the big problem. How much would he be, etc.? Well, how much would you sell him for? If he had to sell him, he had a transfer request on the private. No one knew he'd handed a transfer request, but you had to sell him. How much would you take for him? Well, in today's market, he's a £20 million player. He can play centre back, he can play centre midfield, and he can score goals from centre midfield. He is a, he's a twenty million pound player. If that fella went from Hull for fifteen million, then Cheku Kiete is a is a twenty million pound player. Yeah, I, I would take. I would agree with that really, but um, I, I I think more has been made out of these comments than meets the eye. Really, he's, he's just a player who doesn't want to overly commit to a club. It happens at every club, probably it happens at every West Ham player except Noble. I'd imagine he'd be he's the only player I'd expect to say, no, I'm not leaving. I think everyone else would be wise enough to think, well, if there's a, if there's a chance that a bigger club's going to come in, I'm going to take it. I mean, I'm not going to talk myself out of the transfer window just on the off chance a big club comes in. I think yeah. any player would be foolish to rule out moves to a Champions League club while at West Ham. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure he plays for a Champions League club, to be perfectly honest, but I do think he's certainly West Ham standard where we are at the moment. But we see this does happen when players go away 
I mean, see it actually with French speaking players quite a lot. And uh, they go back to France or they go back to Africa, which obviously has so many French speaking countries in it. Um, and, and then you get the old thing that comes out and they say, oh, they were misquoted and there's something was lost in translation. I think it happens a lot. And then they come back and say, oh, no, I, I didn't say that. And, and then they release a slightly different statement. I think Antonio was annoyed at being played at right back last season. He just didn't come out and. And, and say it publicly, but he certainly had a word with Bilic and said, I prefer not to play there. It may, it may be key. I want a new contract. I mean, it could be a complete opposite when to move. He may actually just be training a rough art, David Sullivan, to hand him a new deal and tie him down for a couple of weeks because other players have had new deals. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember when the last Kiai signed a new one, uh, but I'd really be surprised if he was quite a low earner compared to the, the newer players, if you like. Well, yeah, the, the owners rate him highly. The owner, I'd. Um, yeah, I mean, the owners do rate him highly, and I certainly, David Gold thinks he's uh, a very, 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 very good player. You know, he, he speaks about him in the same um, sentence as uh, as Yaya Torre, uh, which I think is probably not 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 entirely accurate because Yaya Torre, at his best, was one of the best players in the Premier League. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, he certainly, I think he's rated highly, so I'm sure they would give him a good wage, you know. He's, David Gold only rates Kiai because he is a seasoned international. In he certainly is. Uh, right, question time. Come to the end of the show. This is the time where you get to fire your questions in and we'll rattle through them. So you've got any questions, put them in the live chat right now and we'll get them fired over to Gonzo. Also, if you've been watching it and you've enjoyed the video so far, drop a like on it, hit the subscribe button and get your camera phone out, get your phone out, record yourself for six seconds, talk about anything rest time. If there's anything we've missed, if you're pissed off about something, if you disagree with us or you agree with us, anything, just get your phone out, record yourself for six seconds, 90 seconds and send it to gonzohamstrategy.com. The link is below. Right, Gonzo, anything else we've missed out? Any other news or that going around West Ham? Well, the season tickets... I suppose I've gone on sale to the waiting list now, so that's a good thing. Um, is there anything else that we've not covered? I don't think so. It's quite slow news, really, just generally. I think with West Ham, this is, we're, we're feeding off scraps as much as we normally don't like it when the owners drip feed information. I think to a certain extent that they've stopped and news has come really quiet. And uh, so, yeah, it's, there's not an awful lot of it. But I do think the transfer window, it's as a whole is quite slow at the moment it's, it's, it does seem like right, it's waiting for someone to spark it into action with a couple of deals here or there they were talking on the on the radio today they were talking about well, the Lewandowski thing came up and they were talking about Man United You're actually Man United have not signed anyone yet actually and started looking at it I think Liverpool are just about to wrap up the uh, Sala deal and there's not a lot actually happened so maybe there'll be a flurry of activity maybe we're having a Maybe having a, a sort of five-hour extravaganza on transfer deadline day, won't we? Yeah, we will do. Um, first question is Ian. He says, this is interesting. I've read Noble's comments. He basically just, we, we know what happened anyway, but he just said that, you know, how he played with a hernia. So he said that he spoke to the doctors at the club. He had this hernia problem. They decided between themselves to keep it away from Billage because he wanted to play. Played through the pain value, then at Spurs, he was in real pain, but he played through it because of Spurs. They won, sealed Premier League football, went then to pull Bullet Champion. And Ian saying, Do you feel cheated by Noble claiming he's been injured since February, given that we've had Norway who could have done a better job? Well, I'm saying Ian's opinion, he could have done a better job, but I get what Ian's saying here. Do you think Noble should be more honest? Um, I don't, Ian, to be fair, just because I would be hypocritical if I did. I think I often criticise players for being a bit too wimpish, being a bit too weak in the modern day. And I think there's a lot of injuries that players take time off for these days that perhaps 20 years ago they wouldn't have done. And they don't they complain they play too many games and a little thigh strain here and there. I mean, Stuart Pearce played half a game of football with a broken leg, didn't he once? And I'm not saying everybody should do that. But I can't criticise players for being too wimpy and not being as committed to the cause they should be. And then Mark Noble wants to play through an injury. I, I can't really criticise him uh, for that. I, I think he could have done with Tell and Billich, to be honest, because should Noble got injured further while playing with his injury, all fire would have rained down on Billich for that. The press would have had a field day. The owners probably would have been wondering how Billich doesn't know about it and stuff. It could have went very wrong, but it didn't. So knowing what we know, we can I can sit here and say, well done, Noble, fantastic, you've got that commitment and leadership, etc. Well, it was a very risky game um, for all parties involved, but 
I'm not too fussed really. If, like you said, if someone's got a warrior spirit for West Ham and we could do more of them, you can't buy that. That's something, you know, we talk about Giroud, we talk about Inacho, you can't buy that spirit for your football club. There's no price on that. Um, Simon asks, what is an acceptable price for a football shirt? Do you know what, Simon? I, I think there was a breakdown, actually. Maybe it, was on, maybe it was on, maybe Hugh did it. There was a breakdown of how much goes to the sponsor. And, and did you see it? Did you see it, Gio? And how much goes to Umbro? How much goes to the club? Because it was Sports Direct to doing it for cheaper. Um, I, I didn't know. When I was watching this breakdown, I didn't know that it costs £70 if you want to have your name on the back of it. Yeah, I've seen that, actually. I've seen that. It's like 70 quid. But name number is 55 quid at Sports Direct or something. I mean, it's, 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 it's a ludicrous amount of money. It's an absolutely ludicrous money. I think, to answer the question, I think a, a fair price, a really fair price, would be £35. I, re I really do. I think anything over that is so excessive. Football is so expensive. The the beer inside the ground. It's not just a beer inside the ground. Pack of fruit pastels inside the ground or whatever's three and a half quid. It's it's it, you know something that'll cost you you know sort of eighty nine pence down at the garage. Down the right, it's 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 all too much. It's all too much for me. Uh, Forty quid for me. Um, but what I would like to see West Ham do, or I just I don't think any club does it now. Just what I'd love to see West Ham do is they can't do it this season. Next season, bring out their away shirt. Say this is our way shirt for the next two seasons. It's 55 quid, but it's got a two year lifespan on it. And um, we'll change our home kit, but our away kit is staying this for two years. So then fans know that they're going to go get that shirt. It's going to last for two years. I mean, that shirt I've got, it's out of date in 12 months. I'll be, have a different shirt on my chair over there in 12 months. And that's, that's where it falls down a little bit. The football's creeping away from the working class man, unfortunately. And there's pressure on parents to get the kids those shirts come Christmas time. So they all want them. Um, JP says, if we get Giroud, do we sell Andy Carroll and um, sort of buy two pairs of strikers? If so, who? Uh, JP Hammer, was it there? Yeah? It's John. Um, yeah. I don't think anyone will buy him, John. I just don't think anyone will buy him, mate. I, I don't think we're going to have the luxury of selling Andy Carroll. I think Andy Carroll will see out his contract. Um, and then go actually worse than that. I think as Carroll, just before his contract is about to expire, will hit some run of form and stay fit for about 20 games and give us a real conundrum. It would be a no brainer. Andy Carroll scores goals for us and he's good at it and he offers a threat. So we paid the transfer fee for him. We're not going to get it back. We might as well keep him for for the duration. But I don't think what we can do is anymore is, is he, he cannot be a guaranteed starter every time he gets fit. We can't be saying to him, oh, look, Andy, you know, um, such and such is coming in and he's doing this. But as soon as you're fit, we're going to get rid of him back in the team. No, Andy Carroll was going to have to go to being second or third choice striker now. And unfortunately for him, it wasn't his choice to be injured. That is a result of his injuries. I, I really get rid of him. I think he's one of the best strikers in the air in the Premier League. I mean, when you've got a weapon like that in your arsenal, I think it'd be silly to flog. I mean, you've got someone with similar abilities. Um, the two of them, plus a pace of striker, perfect trio, gives Village everything he needs to plan for a game, um, varies what tactics he wishes to use. Um, moving on, we've got Rowan, Rowan, I don't know how you say his name. He Rowan, watches Rowan, everything. Rowan, 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 yeah, he watches all that, the videos. Rowan. There's, um, do you think we'll get rid of Sacco and Valencia? I think we'd like to, Rowan. I think we will get rid of Valencia because the difference between Sacco and Valencia is Valencia's stock is high in South America. Valencia is a good international striker, so he will always go back to his country and score some goals in their international tournaments and pay have the people in the Argentinian League and the Mexican League and, and Brazilian League and whatnot have them looking at him and thinking actually no that that's fine let's go and bring this guy over also they play um now in the world cup qualifying groups i think they mix it up a bit is conquer calf something i can't remember but i think they mix it up with the us and the mexico and this like, central america so there's quite they do play each other quite a lot those teams so i think even the mls i think there are buyers out there is my point we might have to accept a lower fee but i do think valencia will be bought because he does offer some goals for somebody um just not west Ham. Sacco, I can't see who Sacco is attractive to to anyone. Um, well, Daniel says, what prices would you accept 
for them. Well, I think you accept whatever's offered. I mean, we we clearly overpaid for Valencia. Um, Sacco, we didn't really overpay. I think we, we paid three and a half million. You might argue that he he, more, he he did pay that back. He's he scored some goals in the Premier League and so on and so forth. He's not been on particularly high wages, so I think you know I think you, you sort of give him away really to get him off the to get him off the wage. But well, the shameful thing is that he can score goals and he can score goals in the Premier League, which is funny enough. What Valencia didn't seem to be able to do. Sacco can do that, but. Can he ever get his head right or his injuries right to be able to do that? Probably not. So I'm not sure there's a lot of value there for anyone. Uh, Valencia, we overpaid for him. Someone offered five million. You'd have to take it. He costs twelve, I believe. Um, I I would like to think we could get a little bit more for Valencia. His form, his form at Everton was good. His form at Everton, yes, there there is a really good player there, and I think clubs coming up or even a championship club, they're awash for money these days. I think they'd be foolish not to be looking at any Valencia. Think there's a guy that. You know, right for Everton. You now, if he comes down a lower, make him the main striker, put an arm around him, give him a home. I, I think he can come good. So, seven million pay him. Sacco, I'd give him, I'd pay him half a million or something to leave the bloody club and all honesty. I'd like to see him gone. Um, whatever his contract is, he's got left on it wages, chopping half off for him and try and get him rid. Um, we've got another guy, um, the, the, the vlogs. Uh, West Ham Vlog says, on a scale of 1 to 10, how worried are you for the transfer market? I'm, I'm, I'm five. I'm not I'm not extremely worried, um, but I'm not totally relaxed. If relaxed is zero and extremely worried is 10, I, I probably am a five at the moment. There's, nobody's done real business yet and there's still a bit of time to go, but I am starting to get concerned. Ask me next week and I, I think I'll be I'll be gradually move, moving up the scale. I'm a three. I'm really quite calm. I remember saying to you ages ago, I'm quite confident the board are going to do well this summer. I've still got a little bit of that confidence about me. We haven't missed out on anyone yet. Giroud, Inacho, Bashwai, they still haven't moved. They're still there. No one's got them, so we haven't missed out on anyone. I'm probably about a 7 out of 10 worried about certain deals, like the Ian actual one. But overall, I'm about a 3. I'm quite calm, actually, for now. Um, AWP says, does the prices of the football shirts show that West Ham is turning into a brand? Um, I think what he's maybe referring to here is the fact that we're the second highest, second most expensive pair of these shirts. Ah, oh, I didn't. I, I didn't know that. I assumed everyone's were the same prices. So no, I think we, I think we've got the second most expensive ones. <sighs> I I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I, is it showing that we're a brand? I I really don't know. I don't I don't know about all that. I just wish that these increased revenue streams would be reflected in the team. That's that's all. That's all that I. That's all that I wish. I'm. I, I do think the shirts are way overpriced. I tend. I tend to buy mine either late or not at the time, or I wait for a deal, or I, I tend to buy the the second shirt or the training kit. The training kit's always a, always a good one for me to buy. I'm not a big one for buying a home shirt with the Premier League badge because they they're just gonna absolutely rinse you. Um, but I'm not sure it's reflective in us becoming a brand particularly yeah i don't agree with that either i think it's just supply and demand again if people are going to buy them at 55 quid the club are just going to put them up to 58 quid next year aren't they until until the, the sales dip quite alarmingly they're going to keep increasing unfortunately um next guy i can't read my own writings apologies i think it was daniel yeah it is daniel it says what's your thoughts on the london stadium and how do we improve it for next season? I like this question. Before before you answer, there's a video on our channel, mm, literally from a couple of days video. ago, with Nick Tom, yeah. about the London Stadium. It was really, really good. Um, but go check it out. We'll put a link to it at the end of the video, actually. There'll be a big circle beside one of my heads. I'll have that video, as well as the subscribe button and the other channel button. But... Check it out here. What's your thoughts on all in the stadium? Yeah, yeah, just so as you know, if you are looking and you are on our, our Hammers chat YouTube channel or on the app, it's the video just before this one. So if you just click down, it'll just be it's called Let's Discuss. Um, what can we do to improve it? Um, I don't think there's an awful lot that we could do apart from maybe... I think the improvements... We're, we're restricted. We're restricted because it is an athletic stadium conversion. So until the point where 
maybe one day we own that stadium and the roof can be extended further which would then allow some seats to be moved closer the only way the seats to be moved closer is if there's never never any athletics run at that stadium again well that's not going to happen at the moment because we don't own it and uk athletics also paid into that stadium so they would need paying off as well um they are in, in many respects as a timeshare and they own a little bit and we own a little bit and and you know newham council do and and that's really what's going on in terms of what we can do whilst restricted by those parameters i don't think we can do an awful lot more i think you've got the unofficial standing areas i think that the kiosks start to improve um i think that the, the stewarding started to improve as, as geo said a lot of this was covered in, in that video with the, with the guys speaking on it um but it's very minimalistic how much we can improve i do feel the more we go there the more it will start to feel like home but for the moment it's going to feel like a place of transition just purely because the amount of building work going on around it as well as blocks of flats and and new buildings springing up everywhere so we went we went there we went there two weeks ago and it had already changed since the last game the, the, when we went there the last game of the season so um yeah not no big improvements i'm afraid daniel uh, i think they just need to listen to fans i think fans have got the best suggestions you know i've seen some people since the season's finished say why is there no program sold inside the ground why isn't there is plastic as this might sound why isn't there merchandise stalls because there's plenty of room in the concourse so why isn't there anything selling the official merchandise because the club shops always ram so why is no one thought well let's let's move the merchandise into the stadium you want people in the stadium earlier that's what the clubs say they want people in the, in the ground before kickoff as early as possible we need something to entice us in the ground put the football the early match kickoff needs to be on the big screen now we mentioned that in the bloggers meeting with karen baby she yeah. has to know because one person in the other one the sab complained and that it makes people drink beers at half time and not rush back to their seats because they're watching the game but it's an obvious solution turn them off at 3 p.m or something but have them on and um, but i don't know but listen to fans that, that's the solution, in my opinion. Listen to fans. We've got the best ideas because they're the ones that pay money and turn up for it. Listen to the, the match scores. Get your supporter liaison officers. Give them a clipboard in the first game of the season. Dot them around the stadium and stop random fans. Say, how can we improve this thing behind us? It's now half an hour before kickoff. How do we get you in there half an hour earlier? Tell us. It's not, most people will say, I'm not doing it. Piss off. But there will be one or two people that will come up with an idea and it probably won't cost them anything. Will it cost them to put a programme seller inside the ground? No. You just move someone from outside to the inside. It didn't cost a penny. Improved it. Sorted. Listen to fans. Anyway, Justin says, why are we not being linked with left forwards? I think we are, actually. Um, why are we not being linked with who? Left forwards. I think it means left wingers. We don't have any. Um, so, on your Kuru, we'll be linked yeah. with him. Probably can play left wing, I suppose. But do you think we need a left winger? Oh, yeah. I thought so for some time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I really, really do. As I need a little bit more pace on the counter. I've, I've been, you know, quite consistent in that, and so I, I absolutely see the need for being linked with those two that you've just mentioned. And I do think we are, and for that reason, I think the club know it, and it is is highlighted um, in the targets that we've been looking at as well. Uh, now, I, I, the the, tr the trouble is, it always leads to that thing about well, Lanzini plays on the left, and where will Lanzini play? But they'll find a place for him, and. The night, mate. Sounds getting a bit. Um, they'll find they'll find a place for him, and no one's ever fit for every game anyway. So I do think we are after a left forward, a left winger. For the Lanzini thing, I say what you do is you put him in the team, and if Lanzini's playing centre mid or centre attack mid, you use the left winger. If he's playing on the left, you don't use the left winger. Yeah. Unfortunately, Lanzini's the main boy. Um, but I think we need one. But who would you? This is my own question. Who would you prioritise more? A second striker. Or a left winger. I, I, Giroud, I wonder. I, I, I wonder. I wonder this. Well, if we've got Giroud, we then we need a we need a guy that can do, perform both roles. Um, in, I know I can't get this guy, but almost like Alexis Sanchez can play left of the forwards, or he plays through the centre. But I think if we get Giroud, we still have not addressed the pace. It needs to be that second striker. I do wonder. It's funny you mentioned the second striker. I thought this earlier. I wonder how much of our our inactivity in terms of bringing a striker in is because we're so fixated about getting two. I just think maybe we just go and get one start with them. We'll deal with getting the second one afterwards. If that's, if that's the case, but I do feel we need a fast striker. Uh, last thing I want to be left with is Andy Carroll 
Giroud and Ashley Fletcher because actually we've we've got nobody sort of small, diminutive, and very very pacey to get in behind people. And Valencia. <laughs> you want pace? There's your pace. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to take the ball with them. Is it like our Forrest Gump when he carries on running out here out of football stadium? That, that's that's what they that's what they've got to do though. I think they need to go get them. In. You know something? I think most West Ham fans are sensible. You go get Giroud or Ian Acho for thirty million or something, then you you don't come out and say be hint. That's majority of the budget gone. We don't have a lot left. We're going to try and get the next striker in, but it's going to be a cheaper one. It's going to be a load. It's going to be a punt. I think most fans will say that's fine because you've gone and got the main yeah. one. It, honestly, it's, it's much better for them to come back with one main guy and one punt but then two okay ones. Don't come back with, I don't know, Andre Gray and Musa because no one's going to be happy with that. Everyone's going to go, two risks there. Don't come back with Shane Bloody Long and someone else. Everyone's going to go, what is going on here? When you come back with Giroud and a Shane Long, no one will care. Everyone will be delighted. Everyone will think, this is perfect. Thank you very much. Most West Ham fans have their heads switched on and, and they know the deal. Um, right, any more questions? Get them out. I've got one more. I'll take any more that come in the next couple of minutes, then we'll start wrapping this one up. Because the last one for now, maybe, um, from Padashenko, I think. It's quite an interesting one. It's from the season ticket. So they put the prices up for the new season ticket holders. He said, for Claret members, does this mean the match day tickets are going to go up in price? Personally, I think I, 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 I think I asked the question actually because the reason you get a season ticket is it's more sort of discounted. It's match tickets with a slight discount. So thank you for your loyalty to 19 games. Here's a little discount. So the, I think they've almost got to put the match tickets up by a couple of quid in order for the season tickets to continue to have value. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, I I totally and utterly agree. I I think I think everything is going up. And not just football, I think every price. I don't know if you know, I went to the shop the other day, the price of everything in the supermarket seems to have gone up. I think the prices for everything are going up at the moment. So, yeah, that, that wouldn't that wouldn't surprise me. And it's they can charge what they want because people will buy them. There were a lot of games last season where people were scratching around trying to get tickets. And so if they can charge top back for them, then, then they'll do that. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not saying, by the way, just sort of... Uh, discretion here we're not saying we want the match tickets to go up in price we're saying we're, just, <laughs> no, we're not saying yeah put the prices up please come on it's cheap cheaper tickets for season ticket all the dealer tickets for match day um ones but no i think they are going to creep up by a couple of quid because we were sold out every game last season and the match the, the ticket exchange while some people don't like it it was popular and when tickets went up they were getting sold and some people I don't know why some people were going on and they were like 200 quid, but I assume that means there's only one or two left, but, or there was a problem with the ticket exchange. But they were selling out on the ticket exchange as well, apart from a few games, the less popular ones, your Burnley during the week, etc. It's obviously not going to sell on ticket exchange. But there was a demand last season, and this is with us playing crap football. If we, if we go get a decent strike and start playing pretty football, well, this goes back to Daniel's question. How do we improve the London Stadium? Play better on the pitch, and that London yeah. Stadium will improve dramatically. And um, so I think, I think that's why if you demand's going to go up if we start playing well, if, we, if we're up playing like we're in last season Upton Park, tickets are going to be not like not quite gold dust. They're going to be well sought after. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I don't think we've got any more questions going. So, so have you got anything you would like to add? I don't think so. I think so. Oh. Well, I'll start wrapping this one up. Keep your eyes out. We're going to have a, a shirt video coming out in the next couple of nights. To be honest, it's my fault it's been delayed. I'm taking ages to send all the stuff to Charlie, but Charlie's going to work hard. He's been working hard editing our Let's Discuss series. The video will be popping up any second soon. So click on it, watch them if you haven't already. And also, get your phone out and record. On the other channel where your clips are going, we will be giving away one of these photos. Like I said, there's a Creswell one there, a Cotty one there, and another Alec Creswell one there. Beautiful stuff. Um, oh, now, record yourself. 60 to 90 seconds. You choose a topic. Say anything you want. doesn't matter if you have a rant and swear away. That's still going up. Send it to the email addresses below. Hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, like it. Gonzo, say goodbye. Goodbye. It's goodbye for me. See you next time.